Rome Total War Remastered. Back to the good old days when I thought this series was just going to alternate between this and medieval with every release, but with prettier graphics every time. I'd have been happy with that. These old games, they had a certain simplicity to them that the series lost with Rome 2. After that title, it felt as though my time was taken up deciding stupid things like which general to give a 2% charisma bonus to, and I didn't like that. I wanted for my decisions in this game to be about which fortifications to build, and which part of France I would invade next. Which is why it feels so good to return to Rome 1 again. This remastered edition is based on the original game engine, but with greatly improved visuals and a few new features. It contains the original game, as well as the Barbarian Invasion and Alexander expansions. And on top of the original 22 factions, there are now 16 more that can be played this time around. Not that I care about that, I just want to play as the Britons and to invade France. Again. Let's begin. I could just amass an army and roll into France, all swords blazing. Believe me, I want to. But this time, I decided to play it a little smarter. I struck up trade deals with France and Germany, and it was through these negotiations that I learned of which regions France currently had control of, and which ones they didn't. Very well. I noticed that their empire was split in two by a few barbarian settlements in the south of France. What if I was to take control of these, and to make them military strongholds, effectively dividing their forces in two? I mean, yeah, it splits mine in two as well, so maybe this was a really stupid idea. But there's no way of knowing until it's done. So I collected my armies, and headed down to the barbarian regions in the south of France, hoping to get there before the French could. But alas, they kept getting blocked by French armies everywhere they went. For such a large map, it's surprising how bottlenecked it can be at times. Eventually I reached the barbarian settlement, only to find the French were already laying siege to it. Damn. Never mind, time to go for the region below that instead. But the French beat me to this one as well. This just wasn't my day. My armies were a long way from home, and the British Empire was out of money. Wherever I went, it seemed as though the French were already there. And then they attacked. How dare they? I mean, obviously I was going to do it at some point, but it's not like they knew that. So I did the only thing I could think of, and attacked their two provinces in Italy. I brought along several battering rams to target numerous stretches of wall to spread their forces more thinly. Ah, the battering ram is at the gate! The Britons are known for their infantry, but not so much for their archers or cavalry. Which I think is unfair, since my chariots proved to be absolutely devastating as they ploughed through my lines of infantry time and time again. Meanwhile, my infantry were still struggling to take the gates from the Gauls, who were stubbornly holding on, until my chariots charged into their backsides. This pushed them back from the walls, and the French retreated to the town centre. Our warriors have driven the enemy from his own walls! The way to victory is open! The warlord of the enemy army is running like a startled goat! Hunt him! Goats make good eating! You have killed the enemy general! We're under attack! I tried to do cool tactics with slingers and my spear-throwing cavalry, but it descended into a chaotic bloodbath, and I soon came out victorious. The victory is yours! And same in the other fight. I slaughtered the populations of both cities, and in the process, clawed back almost as much money as I had lost in the first place. Destroy! Victory! But things weren't so easy in the north of France, where a gigantic army had attacked my ill-prepared settlement in Samaro Brivia. My warriors roared, and my druids moaned menacingly. Fortunately, here I could be on the defensive, and I did the usual strat of camping behind the walls and forcing the enemies through a choke point. But again, it was the chariots which proved to be the true force to be reckoned with. They carved lines through friend and foe alike, like bread through butter. They eventually even obeyed my commands, getting around behind the enemies and pincering them all into submission. It was glorious. The enemy general tried to flee, but he didn't get too far. The enemy are crushed like beagles beneath your heel! This was an unexpected success as I slaughtered the 2,500 strong French army. We're besieged! But they were immediately attacked again, and this time I lost, and with it was pushed out of France completely. Despite a disastrous start, my actions so far had now left me in a stronger situation than I had been in the first place. While my plan to divide France into two had failed, I had gained a lucrative foothold in Italy, which was sandwiching the French in the middle. But in doing so, I had opened myself up on many fronts to other factions. 
Right now, the last thing I wanted was to go to war with the Romans. So I mopped up the remaining French forces in Italy we shall rule! and sent diplomats to my new Italian neighbours to establish strong trade relations. We see no benefit to us. It might have just been me, but I didn't get the feeling that the Romans wanted to be friends. I just hoped that they'd leave me be for long enough to be able to rebuild my armies enough to attack the French again. But they didn't. They immediately attacked my settlements. By this time it only contained a skeleton crew, as the bulk of my army had left for French regions as I didn't want to lose more to the Roman troops than I had to. Sure, my town's army was outnumbered and outmatched by the Roman legions, but regardless, their might was terrifying and they decimated my poor town guard. The enemy celebrate and think us cowards! Things weren't going much better for my armies in Italy either. My leader, Baravendus, got lost in the Alps somewhere, while his son stumbled across another French-owned settlement, which he besieged. It wasn't long before reinforcements arrived, which he valiantly fought against and won. But he was now severely outnumbered against the town he was besieging. It would require incredible military strategy to win against these odds. Amidst a snowstorm, he successfully rammed the gates open and stormed in, taking the walls and opening the gates to everybody else and he routed the entire enemy army. They retreated to the town centre, leaving me free to choose my plan of attack on the settlement. Drink with his ancestors and watch his warriors flee! But this is where it all went wrong. My chariots got lost in the town and simply refused to do anything but to attack the enemies head on. I tried and tried to get rank and order but my troops weren't having any of it, so it all descended into a messy bloodbath and soon my faction's heir was killed. Regroup! Your general is in his grave! and my army immediately defeated. Run! A major blow had been struck to my efforts in Italy, and now it was Baravendus' army alone out there, and a single city which was now besieged by another French army which had poured out of the woodwork from somewhere. My Italian front all rested on Baravendus being able to break the siege in what was to be a huge engagement, full of reinforcement and everything, taking place on the plains just outside of the town of Mediolanum. Brave Baravendus was quick to attack one of the enemy fronts, before the other could combine with it to make for an even more formidable army. For the first time, the British swordsmen got to see action, all comprising battalion soldiers. These are some of the best infantry that I have access to, but even they are yet to discover the benefits of armour, which isn't just there to protect against pointy things, but also against the cold bite of winter. Idiots. It was all going well, with a few reserve warbands being used to delay the second army from reaching the main battle. But then the enemy brought out his heavy cavalry, and I had to decide on whether I wanted to risk it all on a head-on duel with my faction's leader, Baravendus. But I needed to quickly turn the tide in my favour if the Italian dream was to remain a thing, so he confronted the enemy general on the field of battle. The enemy warlord lies dead! Success! The enemy general was defeated, and very soon the entire French army retreated, a tradition they would prove to be rather fond of repeating it for centuries to come. We need fight no more! Oh yes we do! No more! Oh yes we do! The battle for Midiolobum Lanum is over. The battle for Western Europe is about to begin. Yes. My armies in Italy lie scattered, yes. against French and Roman forces alike. My faction's leader stands alone, surrounded by enemy regions. And England's in a terrible financial state, has very little military, and with the French threat just a boat trip away. This is Rome Total War as I know it, but with remastered graphics and small adjustments to the gameplay, like how they finally fixed Squalor which has stopped me from ever managing to beat this game before. But playing on hard mode has taken its toll and I'm not liking my chances, but I'm going to fight France to the bitter end. How I go about it though is your decision. Do I sidetrack my story to stand my ground in Italy against the Romans? Or does Baravendus regroup what military he can before marching straight back into French territory again? Vote in the poll that I'll release alongside this video. This video has been sponsored by Creative Assembly to showcase the new Rome Total War Remaster, which will be coming out on April the 29th and is available on Steam right now, and for a half price discount if you already own the original game.